from the Charlie Pete Studios, this is the Ellen Taylor Show. Are you nervous? Are you nervous to be on somebody else's podcast? I'm always nervous to be on Ellen's show because you never know where it'll take you. Ah, uh, hopefully that's a good thing. Hopefully you trust me enough to know Completely. that I'm going to take you down a good path and not some terrible one. Trust you can. Let's just jump right on into it. Season two, episode two of the Ellen Taylor show. My name is Ellen Taylor. And I thought, you know what? Who better than to co-host this, the second episode of the season than my actual co-host on the master plan, the one and only Lofa Tatupu, my friend, my guy. Hi. Hello. Hi, everybody. Lofa, you do a bunch of stuff. Uh, a lot of people know you from, you know, your days as a Seattle Seahawk, a multi-time pro bowler, captain. You even went back and you coached, too, for a little while. And then you turned that into a, a CBD business, Zone In, which has been super successful, both personally and professionally for you. And you somehow still have time to take on all of these other projects, like a little show called The Master Plan. But I want to plug your podcast. If you're coming on my podcast, let's talk about yours for a second. This is this is great, but what's the podcast doing now that football season is over? We have a little bit of time off, which, you know, like, I, I'm lucky in everything that I do, as you mentioned, I just always had a great team. And I'm so serious when I say, I just show up and get to talk shit, essentially. Are we allowed to swear around here? Totally, you're allowed to swear. I just want to be myself. So. Please do. Go for it. I mean, listen, I'm not going to scold you as long as no one else is going to scold you. If Rach says it's okay, if wifey says it's okay to swear, then swear. My mom might have a problem with it, but I, it's where I got it from. So, um. Your mom is also on my Instagram sometimes, too. She's the sweetest woman, so I hope I'm not getting you in trouble. So sorry, mom, but your boy's going to swear a little bit. During COVID, you know, couldn't go anywhere, and um, I thought... What better to brush up and help uh, myself in terms of speaking to doing appearances, doing all these podcasts. I started doing a ton, but I, I was a, a guest with uh, on Brett Davern's Seahawks podcast, which is now rebranded to be the Take 12 podcast. I never knew that a podcast would take me places, literally. Um, it took me to Germany this year uh, with a bunch of my old teammates. It was incredible. Um, just going there and, and, you know, I'd never really been out of the country. It was one of like the first, I've been to like Canada and Mexico, but you don't really consider that like going somewhere. Right. Whenever I said it, they're like, they're like you've never traveled then. I was like, I guess I haven't. And it did kind of give me the travel bug. So that, uh, 1937 farms, which is of course the first cannabis business, uh, I had myself and Matt McCoy, my brother, NFL brother there. And that kind of led me down to the CBD path that you explained. Um, let me say this. You're not forcing me to by any means, but I'm a big fan of 1937 Farms, big fan of Zone In. In fact, um, it's no secret. I went back to visit Michigan in March of 2020 uh, and got stuck for two and a half years. But you and Rach, you and you and wifey uh, sent me off with a nice little going away present, which lasted me through a lot of stressful times during the beginning of the pandemic. I'm a fan. Thank you very much. When we talk about these opportunities right you have an opportunity to join a show called the master plan i want to talk about how you were brought into it and then how you thankfully brought me into it as well and where we were going to go from there so let's talk about how you got involved with the master plan so i met dan redwine the the master planner himself the the creator of the show Several years ago, about three, I think, um, at a charity event. I was at a charity golf event, and we just hit it off. The energy was there. He was he's a great dude, uh, super driven and passionate about what he's doing. I could see the way his eyes would light up when he talked about what he wanted to do. So then I saw him a year later at another golf tournament. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, I, I think I'm you know, finally ready to do it. Because you know, we were talking, just like in life, everyone waits for the right time, right? And he said, you know, the hell with it. I'm going to make the time now. And it was incredible to see he had season one. He's like, I'm ready to launch season two. And you said you would help. So I want you on the show. And I was like, I don't know anything about hosting a show or, you know, other than like a podcast. I go, what, you know, like fill me in more. What do I, what do you want uh, in terms of me being on film? He's like, I want to go and highlight all these resorts, what they have to offer. And I want you to lead a segment called living like a local where you just get to go have fun. And I go, 
I'm in. Right. Go and have fun. That sounds like a tough job. It's it sounded like a dream. I was like, okay, you know, um, I kept telling him, I was like, hey, you really need someone with a presence. You know, I'm sure maybe down the road I'll I'll get comfortable on TV and on the screen. Um, because I really not. And Ellen, you know this, just going back to every time we ever did a live segment or anything, you were like, Oh, just relax. Oh, we're on air. And I'm just like, Oh, I didn't have time to freak out because <laughs> You used to always throw curveballs at me. I did that on purpose. I know. It's part of your, I did it on purpose. I, I knew. It's part of your genius. And so you were the first person that came to mind when Dan, you know, said, hey, I want you on. I go, okay, can I bring someone with me? I go, just because you're going to love them. They're energetic. They're amazing on TV, on screen. I think it's really going to give it an extra boost. And he was like, yeah, well, you know, I got to meet him, of course. And so... Then I, I set the meeting up you, uh, with you at, at Patterson Sellers, and we all just hit it off. And he saw the chemistry. He saw, you know, how full of life you are. And, you know, I, th I don't think it could have been a better better parent. There are four hosts on the show now, right? Uh, Dan, Rachel, Lofa, and now myself. You and I, Lofa, we get to go live like a local. We get to go do all of the fun things, which is stuff that I have been, for lack of a better term, classically trained how to do because it was literally in my job description to go out and have fun my entire career. So I'm really thankful that you thought of me and thought, hey, come on board with this or at least just me and I'm really thankful to have met Dan and Rachel because I'm going to be fully transparent here I was a little hesitant because I wasn't sure I had watched the show to see what I was getting myself into before the meeting and the production quality was there everything was there like I could tell that they weren't you know um media personalities at uh, like first and foremost, but they were good on camera. It was just something that was in them, right? They knew what they were talking about. They seemed like cool people. We had that meeting. More than anything, you vouched for them and you and I are tight. So I was like, okay, I I'm down. But when it came to shooting our first episode, I thought, okay, we're not going into this with, with TV people. Just, you gotta be patient. We're not sure what we're walking into. And no kidding, like the first episode, the first yeah. day, which was long, don't get me wrong, I left feeling Energized. so good. I felt like you had introduced me to some great people. They, they really are. You got to get the credit for this. Like we said, passion, they brought to the table, right? And then your your energy and your kind of vision helped made things a lot clearer, which is also why I brought you on board because I thought it was just meant to be. It was like, this is how I envisioned it. Like, because it was just... You know, the coaching you provided on top of, you know, for whoever was talking was, okay, we're going to do that again, but we're going to do it like we love it. And I was just <laughs> like, I could, and then when I went back and watched, like, you know, the, the part that I read or whatever, I was like, okay, I know what she's saying now because I was either too stiff with my body language or it was, it, I mean, it's, it's fun, you know. Learning something new is, is scary, but also fun. And so I just wanted to go in with an open mind and, and learn from one of the best, Ellen. Well, you are very sweet and very kind, and I appreciate you so much. And I want to I wanna actually sing more of your praises, but let's talk about this um, premiere party first. Uh, March 1st in Kirkland uh, from 6 to 8 p.m. Side room, right? Tap house. Right. Is that right, hustle. Night Hustle Tap House, yeah. March 1st, 6 to 8 p.m. Lofa will be there signing his autographs, you know, mingling with his people, and the rest of us will all just be peasants yeah, yeah, yeah. waiting. Amongst, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tell us about the party. Yeah, we have the little premiere, which I'm sure they'll be showing, um, you know, on the TVs, on the screen, that Side Hustle Taps, and then we're just going to have fun and just kind of show everybody what we're up to, um, this this new, you know, adventure we started, uh, all, all of us. Um, like I said, uh, Dan and Rachel did season one, and I think just with all that, you you saw how long that first day we shot for like seven hours, and you know I think they were getting tired because then they go to filming, they go to editing, they go to, and it's so much work. So you know we joined a great team, and I, I think you know it's it's awesome that we get to shoulder some of that burden. Not not much. I feel like I'm still just showing up and like having a good time and. But he says it's helping, so, and I'm pretty sure because I brought you along. 
he he's very very happy with uh, the addition well i mean i think that all of us together and i'm not just talking the four hosts which again if you come on march 1st to the premiere i hope you meet all four hosts of the master plan um like i said dan rachel lofa and myself but it's not just the four of us that work well together it's all of the crew that's gotten together it's been so nice to talk with other people and different creatives and different minds and just in general talk about things but then talk about a project that we all kind of have the same vision for and like you said i mean i can't can't wait for everyone to meet Dan Redwine because this person believes in himself more than anyone else I have ever met in my entire life and it is inspiring. I have never met a more positive person. I have never met someone, like I said, who believes in themselves as much as he does. And this is just someone that you want to root for and you can't help but want to be part of their team because you want them to succeed and you know that he will. It's just written all over him. It's amazing. And he's the humblest person ever. His family's great. Everything is, everything is great. Yeah, that that first party we threw, Patterson Sellers, it was just to see the smile of his, on his face was was priceless because this is something he had been talking about for several years, and it, it's really watching his dream come true. And uh, and you know, I, I think he he brought it up to several places, like, hey, this is my dream, and this is what I can do for you. It wasn't even so much for himself, um, and. It's just incredible. He just took it over and he's like, I'm, you know what? I'm doing it. And, and he woke up, he said, 2 or 3 a.m. And he said, I got it. It was literally one of those dream situations. And I guess he said his wife, Erin, was horrified. She's like, what? What happened? He's like, it's called the master plan. And um, so, yeah, like I said, highlighting these resorts, showing what they have to offer, um, the lifestyle on top of it, which is where me and you uh, you and I come in. Uh, it, it's it's incredible. It's, it's really and it's there's so much that I don't I don't know how, you know, you come up with all the ideas that that, that he has. Uh, but it's I can't wait to see where it takes us. You know, you talk about someone who goes after their dreams, right? And that is Dan Redwine with the master plan. That is you with football. That was me with my career, right? Um, but. I want to talk a little bit about what happens after that, right? And this is where I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to get sentimental. I'm not going to do any of those things. I, I'm going to try. I'm telling myself I'm not going to cry because I really hope that I don't. But, um, you know, you inviting me and you, you kind of, not even kind of, you being the reason why the master plan, Dan and Rachel even knew who I was. And let me be very clear. There's Rachel Lofa's wife, who is a good friend, right? And then there's Rachel, co-host of the master plan. There are two different Rachels. We've got a lot of Rachels <laughs> in our lives. So I want to make that clear. But um, you were the reason why I was introduced to Dan and Rachel. And I am will be forever grateful for that because you and your wife, Rachel, know how hard, more than most, how difficult the last couple of years have been for me. And when you first you kind of teased me a little bit about a project a few months ago. And I was like, okay, I'm not really sure what this is. And then it was actually my birthday. I don't even know if you realized you called me on my birthday um, and said, Hey, I want to meet with you tomorrow at this place. You down. And I looked at it as a gift from the universe because no offense, Lofa, you're a dude. I know you didn't know that it was my birthday that day. Right. Um, but see, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But I took it as, okay, this is a gift from Lofa, the universe that, something good is coming like the, the the clouds are starting to to part a little bit the fog is starting to lift a little bit and um i think uh me with a lot of ego would have been like i don't need anybody's help i don't need anybody's pity um and it wasn't it wasn't pity from your part it was you saw a great oh. opportunity for me and i want you to know that regardless of what the intention was that was a moment when I look back over the last three years, that was a moment in that day that changed the trajectory of, of my life and especially like this depression and anxiety kind of journey that I'm hoping is now very quickly coming to an end. But you were a big part of that. And I want to thank you for wow. that. I, I don't know what to say. It's not often that I'm speechless, but I, I had no idea. And I, I saw I saw incredible value add as, as a, a man that's done a lot. I. I just recognize value. Um, I think that's even when I was in football, recognize somebody that was very important to every team they've been a part of. And, and that's you, Ellen. And that's, you know, the, the truth of, of, of the call. And I'm, I'm happy that it was your birthday. I'm sorry. I didn't say happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> no, no, no. It's even, it's, um, it's even better that you didn't know it was my birthday. Right. It's even better. Cause it was more authentic that way. I wasn't trying to tease you. It was just, with the podcast and us going to Germany, I was like, I told Rachel, my wife, I was like, 
I have something coming up that I have an opportunity to be a part of, and it sounds incredible. And all I kept thinking about was Ellen. So I had told it to Rach, my wife, and I just like, hey, don't tell Ellen yet because I know you guys hang out a lot. And I just didn't want to, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what you were going to do with with the, with all the opportunities you have. And I was just like, I want to put something in front of her and see if she would, you know, want to want to come along and do this because I'm going to do it. But but I would, I'd feel a lot better if she was there. And I'm glad that you did it, and, and thank you very much for doing that. Um, you know, you talk about, okay, team players and seeing somebody and the opportunity, or you saw you saw something in me, and I don't want to make this about me because this isn't about me. I want to ask you, when did you feel like someone saw that in you, whether that was in football, whether that was in business, whether that was, you know, you were going through a hard time in your life, and you really – you desperately needed someone to see you but you didn't realize that you needed someone to see you and then they did is there a moment that sticks out in your mind where that might have happened to you where you might have been the ellen in the situation in my journey you know like most of my life has centered around football and kind of even at times you know when you're when you're chasing that dream you'll equate your success kind of with and, and so I guess it would be my mom early on when I, I didn't get those offers from major colleges and I didn't. And she bluntly just said, fuck it, keep going. That's it. And I'm telling you, like, that's when I look back on my journey, it's that she always believed in me and, and she always saw me as more than I, I really, you know, even thought myself, like in, in terms of what I was doing on the field and, and how much I love the game. It, it was my mom. And, um, you know, so I've, I've had, and then a, a bunch of friends and a lot of great support because nobody does it alone. Um, but when I look back at the journey, it, it was my mom. When I think about what I want to do with this podcast, with the Ellen Taylor show moving forward, you know, the first season was very much, I needed to keep myself fresh because what I wasn't public with at the time was that I was up for a couple of jobs, both in LA and in Seattle, which obviously did not end up panning out, which has worked out well because if they did, I wouldn't have been able to join the master plan, right? Things happen the way that they're supposed to. But now for season two of the Ellen Taylor show, I really wanted to uh, bring on people and introduce, you know, my friends to my other friends, i.e. you, Lofa, and um, really highlight the people who helped see me out of this fog and and to show other people that there is life after trauma, grief, depression, anxiety, pandemic, you name it, there is still life after that. And I spent a lot of time, I am an overthinker, I am the definition of it. And I thought, and if you follow the Enneagram at all, I know Lofa, we've talked about this a little bit, but I love the Enneagram. It's a personality um, personality test, if you will. But my personality type is I'm going to find the answers and I'm going to be the best, right? And so if I was going to grieve, if I was going to go through a depression, I was going to do it the best way possible. But there was no playbook for that. There are no answers. You just kind of have to live until opportunities come about or people, in this case, you and your wife, Rachel, saw an opportunity that, you know, I think you presented me an opportunity that meant more than than you could have even known at that time. So again, if there was a way to, how do you feel like you see that in other people? For those that are listening, um, how do you see that in others? See that people not are necessarily struggling and need a pity, right? Because that wasn't what this was. But how do you see in other people yeah. a struggle that you know maybe you went through before because you've been through times yourself, right? How do you see that and how do you help? Uh, you know, I think. You, you know, it's perspective, you know, and like, you know, when I see others going through struggle, I just think back to all the things that I've been through. Um, and, you know, a lot of it, like my toughest times was when I left football that I didn't have the support of, you know, my brothers, the guys that you go through it with. And uh, so I think I've, I've been easier to recognize it in others now. And so have whereas you know before you might have blinders on we're all dealing with our own stuff on a daily basis right um but i i i think back to one of my brothers that's no longer with us uh jimmy williams he was on our super bowl team he was a captain of special teams um he in one of his darkest times was not worried about anybody and not worried about himself but every rather everybody else and 
um, the Hawks, they do Legends Weekend, and it was incredible. You get to see all your brothers that you, you know, you played football with, and you, know, you had all those good times and bad times. It wasn't always, you know, sunshine and rainbows in football. Um, but, you know, I asked him, I was like, hey, you know, you, you good? You know, how's life? And all, he looked at me, and I had no idea what he was going through. He said, man, I'm great. And, you know, so... He turned it around and asked me, he said, you happy? And it was the first time I, I felt like anybody really asked that question. You know, I think everybody asks you, are you good? And, and you can fake good. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm straight, I'm good, man. You know, everything's, everything's good. Um, but I write quickly because I was in one of the high points of my, you know, existence. I was just very fulfilled and grateful. And I said, man, Jimmy, Thank you for asking. I'm the happiest I've ever been. And, um, you know, so I've been asking people these days, are you happy? Not are you good? Because when Jimmy asked me that, it wasn't until several months later that we had that we found out he had stage four pancreatic cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. They gave him four months to live and he fought it for four years because Jimmy was a fighter. Mm. And uh, so... You know, it, it's just, I keep going back to the conversation because at what has to be one of the lowest points of someone giving you that kind of news, you couldn't tell. And he, he was worried about you rather than himself. And um, he was one of the best teammates I ever had. Unbelievable brother. And, um, you know, I miss him dearly. But, but that, whenever I think about trying to help others it, it's always I go to are you happy rather than good because you can't fake happy you can't fake it and and it's a question that you get an you answer. can't yeah and you get it you get the answer right away because if there's a hesitation you know and then then you go into without overstepping boundaries you say is there anything I can help with like you know, even just if you need to call or talk like just so people know that they're not alone because I think that's really the toughest part is when you're going through something you just feel so alone. You feel alone, but you also don't know what to ask for. You don't know what you need. And I'm glad that you shared this story too, because it's such good perspective, I think, especially for the men that are listening, because regardless though of your gender, when you say, hey, how are you? Good, I'm fine, how about you? Good, right? The, no one actually wants to hear anything other than I'm good, right? Or you're good. But when you ask point blank, are you happy? It made you stop and think, and that does not, from a man's perspective, it doesn't make you a masculine or anything like that, right? From a woman's perspective, it opens it up to that conversation too. And and I'm glad that you said that and you put that out there because that is a great question to ask. Are you happy? Because, I mean, life is, I, I don't care, you know, it's fragile. And it's far too short. I don't care how long you live. It goes by like that. And it's far too quick to, to not be happy. If you're, if you're not happy, then, then what are you doing is how I feel. And so, um, you know, and I really, you know, believe I was meant to get into the cannabis industry because it did. It brought me out of the, the low parts of, of my life in terms of, you know, leaving a career that I, I fought tooth and nail since I was six years old to, to, to make it to the NFL. And I played at the time when I retired 20 23 out of 30 years um, uh, was was all football, all day, every Your day. Your whole life. Whole life, you know? So, you know, how do you move on? You know, I, I it's, it's like not that I didn't know or could do, couldn't do anything else. I didn't want to do anything else. And I think that's, that's something that a lot of athletes struggle with when, when their sport ends. It wasn't an identity thing, you know? You don't think so? No, I, I never cared for the the fame or, or that side of it. or And I knew I was more than a football player. The football just happened to be something I was I was pretty good at. Um, I, I actually, I really loved being left alone in terms of people not, like, stopping you. And i always happy to, to stop and talk football. And, and, you know, when people say, hey, man, I have so many great memories that you provided, you and your teammates provided me and my family. I, me and my dad used to watch the game. So, I, of course, I'm grateful. But it, I don't know. It was just like, it's a lot. And, you know, at the end of the day, everyone, they're still human. You know, the athletes, 
You know, I think some people forget that, but I was grateful for the peace and quiet. A lot of people forget that. And whether it's you're an athlete or you are at the top of your career or you're well known in your community, right? There are different levels to that type of notoriety, right? A lot of us will not experience the type of notoriety that you experienced, right? Um, but there was, there is something to be said about, you know, when I went to Michigan, I, I had my anonymity back, right? People in Michigan, I've been gone for almost 10 years, so people didn't remember Ellen Taylor in my hometown, right? I didn't really keep in contact with a lot of my friends from high school, and even then, like, they just would have known me from high school, but um, there was something peaceful about, you know, with the stuff that I was dealing with, again, like, you know, my dad having the stroke and me becoming his caretaker and just making sure that everything was okay amongst this this pandemic. I didn't have to worry about if anyone was going to recognize me. And again, I'm not saying I'm Lofa Tatupu, right? But there is something sacred and special about having that anonymity and having that peace. But that's not just reserved only for professional athletes. Again, when you get outside of your community, that is a little bit of a blessing to be able to separate yourself from the expectations of of the world around you but you know obviously you and I have been doing a lot of stuff for the master plan and going out and even without the master plan just in general people still recognize you Lofa because you are a big deal you were great you're still in the community you've always got this bright smile on your face you're always happy to see people um, but do you ever feel like you need to suss out who's real and who's not because again that could apply to everybody right so how do you suss out the authentic people versus the ones that are just Oh my God, you're Lofa Tatupu, sign my jersey. You know, the, how genuine they are usually comes across in conversation. So I, I don't ever really have my guard up because I think over time you'll know um, who's, who's there for you and who's there for alternative reasons. And again, this goes for anybody, right? Like you have this perspective of, and it's very clear for you in terms of you're an athlete and these are the fans. But I want to I wanna make this very, very strong point that that can relate to anybody in any situation. If you're a woman and a man's approaching you, right? How do you tell if they're authentic or not? Time will tell, yeah. like you just said. If you are going, if you're new at your job, right? And people are approaching you, is it because they're trying to suss you out? Is it because they genuinely want to help you? Is it because they're trying to undermine you? Only time will tell. So that's the reason why I ask these questions. And I think a lot of times where people forget that you guys, Lofa, as an athlete, are actually people is that what you guys deal with is what the world deals with just on a magnified scale. So I always like to ask these questions and tap into your brain because if you can master that on such a big level, that's something that we as mere mortals can definitely learn from as well. I think it's, it's kind of an energy question too. In that term, that regard is, you know, you, you know, how much energy and time are they putting into the relationship? Like, and like you can kind of gauge, you know, Okay, am I matching that at least to be a good friend? You know, um, that that's how I've always kind of gauged it. Is you know who's there for me when when you know times are tough and um, you know that's who you should really invest in those relationships and be there for them. And also understanding that sometimes people can't meet you where you are, right? There, There's this thing where, you know, when you come out, when you're in such a deep and dark place, right? It's like, oh, well, if they, they really meant, if they were important to you, if you were important to them, they would be there with you through thick and thin. But what I've learned over the last few years is that you can't expect people to understand this level of, grief, depression, anxiety, whatever it is that you're going through, unless they've also experienced it themselves. So it's not fair to expect that from other people unless they understand, right? So you have to understand where people are and that sometimes people just don't know what they don't know, right? And um, that's not a, a character defining thing that doesn't make them a terrible person. That just might mean that they can't help you mm -hmm. in whatever, again, in this instance, terrible situation you might be going through. Yeah, for real. And I mean, they'll They'll only know what you, you actually give them, you know, what information you, you, you let them, you know, in on. And I think that's probably the hardest part when you're going through a tough situation is you don't, you don't want to be a burden to your friends, right, or to, to your loved ones. And I think that's something that we have to get over, everybody. We, we just have to put our ego aside because I think ego comes into it um, and, just, and just say, hey, man, I, I need help, and, you know, uh, and, and – and it's okay if you don't have all the answers, but as long as I know that I have someone to confide in, you know, it'll make this right. process easier for me. 
being vulnerable, which is something that I am really intentionally trying to lean into in more positive ways now with like dating and friendships and things like that. Cause again, I feel like I'm kind of coming out of the fog, but being vulnerable with someone, even just to have someone to not solve the problems with, right. If you're in a dark place, but just to have someone to sit with you in those problems means a lot, even if they can't understand. So again, if you know of someone who's going through a hard time and you're like, I don't know what to do to help, you don't need to know what to do. Sometimes just sitting with them in that is means more than anything you could even imagine. Absolutely. I agree. So I want to make one thing very, very clear before we wrap things up here, because I promise I'm not going to take up too much of your time, Lofa, although it's been a wonderful, wonderful podcast, and I appreciate you for coming on here, my friend. But uh, a burning question, every time I post something about the master plan or me and you, there are a million questions like, oh, my God, you guys would make a great couple. You guys would be great. Let's just set the record straight out here. There are three people in this world that would think that me and you do not make a great couple. Do you want to guess who those three people are, my friend? Yeah, I, I think I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me, you, and? Rachel, my wife. I've never known Lofa Tatupu, the football player, right? I've always known Lofa and Rachel, these friends that I met. Um, and we met doing a charity event. And I think Rachel and I became friends first. And then eventually I have a photo of me, you, and Rachel. And if I can find a way to like put it on the podcast, if you're watching on YouTube or on Spotify, it's the three of us, one Halloween. I, <laughs> what's that character's name? What were you dressed up as that Halloween? Yeah, I was Maui, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh... Was it? I think so. Yeah, the guy from uh, from Moana, the show. Yeah, the, that that was the first time we met, right? We were judging the costume contest. Yeah, I think that was the first time we actually like hung out, hung out outside of that charity event that we had been a part of for a couple of years before that. Oh, yeah. And then yeah, and I was dressed up as like probably some slutty deer or whatever. It doesn't matter. But from there, you know, we became friends. It's all love, Ellen, and your family. You're not mm. friends. We're not friends. You're family. Lofa, so the podcast is on hiatus. Your podcast is on hiatus. Uh, where else can we watch you or see you or, or get our dose of Lofa Tatupu? I got to do a better job of uh, promoting the things I'm doing. And so hopefully, you know, with working with one of the best, you'll help me with that. And so, um, but yeah, so the podcast, yeah, we'll probably shoot maybe twice a month, you know, once free agency and the combine and draft stuff, you know, we're, um, you know, ramps up, but, um, that's the take 12 podcast. No, I got Twitter because I guess everybody has Twitter and they were yelling at me on my podcast to get Twitter. So I have Twitter now. Um, but I'm mainly on Instagram and Lofa underscore Tatupu. I'm always throwing, you know, stupid shit up in the stories. So if you want to see me, that's what you see. I enjoy watching your stupid <laughs> stories. I enjoy watching all of that. And one part of, you know, me coming back and not doing, you know, traditional media is having the time to take on clients in terms of brand management and talent coaching. So listen, if you need someone, I'll give you the friends and family discount. All right. Like, and by that, I mean, you don't got to pay me anything. Really? I will help. I will help because people need to see more of Lofa and more of your family. And you will watching the master plan team. TV. Again, season two, that premiere is on March 1st. You can watch on YouTube or join us at the season two premiere party in Kirkland. Uh, I'll put all the details up on my stories, which then Lofa will share on his stories. There's also this huge giveaway. Dan is really good. Dan and Rachel have done a really good job. Dan and Rachel, Rachel host of the master yeah. plan. Um, done a really good job of securing these amazing giveaways, things that people would only dream of getting. So please make sure you follow the master plan on Instagram. Follow Lofa, Dan, Rachel, Ellen Taylor, all of the things. Um, what other brands do we need to follow? 1937 Farm, Zone In, what else you got? <laughs> Yeah, a lot, man. I'm doing a lot, but it's all stuff I love, so it's fun, you're right. And I think that's where the energy comes in, because uh, everybody has, they always ask, like, and I know you got to get this because you're go go go, and you know, on camera, like everybody's got to be like, how do you not run out of energy? Well, if you're doing what you love, it's fun, and so I've yes. been very blessed and lucky to to do the things I love with people I care about, and uh, it's made it very, you know energizing rather than draining it's good to see good things come to good people because you are one of those good people my friend so wishing you much success not just on the master plan because i'm a part of it but with all of your endeavors i appreciate you and listen if you ever need me to come and hang out in germany with you and all of the other guys like i mean i'm just saying i'm available i feel like it's not 
I wouldn't be truly Ellen Taylor if I didn't try and get myself into a locker room, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was wild. Like, it just, it all came together so fast. So that's why we're, like, actually sitting down and weekly planning, which has been amazing. So, like, we're not just like, oh, we're going to do it. And then it just happens. And then, like, November's here. And we're like, oh, we got a week before Germany. Uh, do we have all our tickets? Like, it was, it was crazy. But it's also in the entrepreneurial spirit made me more like of, cause like you said, you're a thinker. I'm a overthinker. Like, and usually like, even when I, when I go to like talk, I don't plan anything and it's horrible. I need to start planning stuff because <laughs> then you start getting like off track, but um, it's turned me into more of a doer. And, and so, like I said, um, like Jim Carrey, yes, man, just, you can't say yes to everything, but I really try to stay away from no because it's so negative. And, and, and you know, yes is so fun. There are two things here, right? Uh, first off, it's okay if you don't think and you just start talking. You just have to be confident in what it is that you're saying, right? I never think before I talk and it gets me into trouble, but I am confident that I will know how to get myself out of it. I don't like to get myself in trouble, but sometimes the foot goes in the mouth and well, you know what I mean? But that's also part of life's beautiful stories. But speaking of you going to Germany and a beautiful story, I don't know, or a funny story, maybe to like end this, I want to tell you how real, but also the difference between men and women, all right? You go to Germany and I'm having lunch with your wife and and um, we're talking about the time difference. And you were actually out there with uh, a couple of people that we also know that I had interest in figuring out what y'all were doing. OK, are you following what I'm saying here? So I'm like, OK, Rachel, like, let's just check their stories. And we knew who you were with one person in particular. So I'm checking their stories. We're like, are these boys getting in trouble? It was more me than it was Rachel, to be fair. I was like, what are they doing? What are they doing? You know, for everyone listening, do you know what Lofa and these guys were doing? You'd think they'd be out pounding beers, doing all the German thing. They were at TJ Maxx. They were at the German version of TJ Maxx. No, it's TJ Fridays. <laughs> it looked like either a knockoff Fridays or a knockoff TJ Maxx, whatever it was. It was not It was way tamer than what at least me as a woman got my brain going on. So I, <laughs> it was Everything very funny. out there was all like brats and, um, and what was the other, the... Uh... What's the other traditional dish that um, they have out there? Uh, beer, brats, um, pretzels. Schnitzel. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so. Schnitzel. I was like, man, I just want a steak. And so we, we found a Friday's and we went in there. And we, I got a steak. It was amazing because it's crazy. You leave the country. But every pub food, it was like all the same. Whether you went to, even though you went to a different pub, you know, and uh, it was like, so I was like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't take this anymore. I need. I need something else. You wanted something that reminded you of home, but I thought the part that I got out of that is that it doesn't matter how much of a celebrity you think people are. They are just so normal. That's it. It was so, so normal. And I find that so amazing and so great. And it's a nice reminder that, again, doesn't matter what you do for life, your success, your bank account, whatever. At the end of the day, we are all normal human beings. Just treat people with love and respect. And in return, hopefully you get that back. And that's the only thing we can really hope for in this world. And of course, you know, we don't have as much time as we ever want on this planet. So make the most out of it. But Lofa, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and your life to to come on the podcast with me. And I'm very excited to shoot more episodes of The Master Plan with you. And I'm really excited to see where, where our friendship goes from here, my friend. Yeah, I can't wait. Thanks for having me on. Much love. And uh, thank you for everybody that watched this.